I originally created a video to explain why you shouldn't use singletons and action events everywhere. While many appreciated it, others weren't happy, and I understand why. The example I used to explain things wasn't the best, and the new approach I introduced using scriptable objects still required a lot of setup to make things work properly. That's exactly why, in this video, I'm sharing an awesome tool I've built to make things easier, along with a clear explanation of why you should avoid overusing singletons and events. So let's dive in. All right, so I've built this basic game where the player shoots meteors and spaceships. When you shoot them, a particle effect plays and the score increases. Simple stuff. Right now, I'm using the singleton pattern for managing things like the camera shake, visual effects, and game scoring. Let me walk you through the bullet script to explain how this works. Whenever the bullet collides with an object, either a meteor or a spaceship, it triggers an event. First, the bullet gets deactivated, then the object it hits also gets deactivated. After that, it calls the cameraman just singleton to trigger a screen shake, the effect manager singleton to play the particle effect, and finally, the game manager singleton to increment the score. It's super easy to use, just call class name, dot instance dot method, and it works. That's the appeal of singletons, simplicity. But now, let's say I want to create a test scene or demo scene, something lightweight for prototyping, and I don't include the game manager or the UI in the scene. When I run it, I immediately get null reference errors because the bullet script is expecting those managers to be present. Even if I add the game manager back into the scene, I get another error. This time because the game manager tries to update the UI by calling the UI manager, which doesn't exist in the scene. So now I'd need to add the UI manager too. You can see the problem. The bullet script is tightly coupled to other systems like the game manager and UI manager. In order to test or run even a small part of the game, I'm forced to bring in merely the entire system, all because of how the singleton pattern is used here. And this is just a small game. Imagine working on a larger project with this setup. Managing dependencies becomes a nightmare. It gets frustrating, you lose motivation, and the project ends up abandoned. So how can we solve this? Or to solve the problem of tightly coupled scripts, think of a system similar to how YouTube works. When a creator uploads a video, all subscribers get notified. In our game, we create a channel. And when the game runs, any system that needs to respond, like UI, camera shake, or effects, subscribes to that channel. The bullet script is like a content creator that uploads a video. Once that event is published, every subscriber or component that cares about that event gets notified and handles its own responsibility. This decouples the bullet script from having to know about each system individually. I know that managing channels and subscriptions can sound complex, and it can be. That's why I've developed an awesome tool available on the Unity Asset Store. This tool streamlines the process significantly, making it up to 10 times easier to use. It abstracts away the heavy lifting of managing channels and subscriptions, so even beginners can implement this design pattern without needing a deep understanding of the underlying system. Now let's dive into how you can use this tool in your project. Once you install the tool in your project, you'll see a new game event tab under the tools menu, which includes three options, create event channels, subscriber assigner, and view subscriber. As we discussed, the first step is to create an event channel. So click on create event channel and then the add new channel button to create a new one. For example, since we're working with the bullet script, we need a channel for our camera manager. Let's name it camera channel. In our script, we need to pass data like shake duration and magnitude. So we click on the data property button to add these fields, set both to type float. By default, common types like float, int, bool, and others are supported, but you can also add custom types like enums. Once done, click generate to create the channel. If you make changes like renaming the channel or modifying data properties, the green generate button will turn orange to indicate unsaved changes. Make sure to press enter after editing names to register the change. That completes the first step. The second step is subscribing the camera manager to this channel. But before that, let's tweak the camera shake script. Since we're no longer passing values directly, remove those lines and instead create a data variable. Then use game event data dot get data and pass channel name as an argument to retrieve the values. Now open the bullet script and comment out the old method calls that would throw errors. As you may notice, the game object has a camera manager script attached. In that script, we have a shake camera function. So basically we're telling it to run that function whenever the event is broadcast. It can call any public method from any script, as long as the target game object has that script attached. To subscribe the camera channel, open the subscriber assigner tab, select the camera manager game object, then choose the channel we just created. After that, select the camera manager script and choose the public method you want to run, like shape camera. When the event is broadcast, this public method will be executed. After that, click on assign method. 
Now for the final step, notifying the camera manager. In the bullet script, simply call event broadcaster dot broadcast camera channel. The tool will even suggest this method, then pass the required parameters like shake duration and magnitude. You can also pass null for components if not needed. That's it, it's that simple. I'll follow the same steps for other systems too. When I run the game, everything works perfectly. To test it further, I created prefabs, made a new scene, added them in, and even removed or disabled the UI manager and camera manager, and the game still runs without errors. Lastly, the View Subscriber tab lets you see which objects are subscribed to which channels in the current scene, and you can even write a description explaining why each subscription exists. Let me know what you think of the system. The tool link is in the description. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.